I have used seven DIY Dollar Tree snowmen, and we are using the door sign, the drop cloth, and we're going to remove all of his parts and pieces because we'll be reusing those. Remove the tinsel, you'll find a loose area, and just unwrap them. And using zip ties, you are going to attach all three of these together. But make sure you remove those stubby plastic knobs from off the side. This will give it a more smoother finish whenever we go to place the drop cloth around our assembled 31 inch tall snowman. So we have used the witch hat in the pot, the ornament, and the snowman front door. And as you can see here, I am placing the drop cloth around it, and I just cut it to size or to fit, and glued it down. Now there will be an area in the back of this, so we'll be covering this very shortly. Now I bent this part down and tucked it in, and then I glued it, just to give it security. And then I took and cut that fabric and pulled it through the hole and glued it down as well because we are fixing to make him a fleece hat and we needed this tucked in so I just basically did it the old-fashioned way I laid the fleece scarf there using my fingers I felt my way through it and clipped enough fabric to make the hat then I went back and snipped the sides so that it would be more contour and I could just wrap that around and glue it into place. And that will also help keep him flat in the back. Now taking a cardboard box from a pizza, and this is a frozen Mike's pizza, and just folded it out and glued it into place. And I used ice cream sticks to give it more firm support because we are going to be attaching the light box to the back. Now to make it look primitive, I took burlap strips and I glued the burlap to itself and simply wrapped the lights. This burlap is going to serve as a harness when we go to attach your lights to the side of your snowman. And I just wrapped it up real quick. Moving progress, but a necessary one. So just then when you get right here in this dip area, you're just going to allow, allow the, the fabric to kind of do the work for you. And so you'll just put just a little bit in that groove. You're going to do this part of the cord here before you do the light part. The smallest dab, and I'm actually spreading it out. And then I'm going to lay my light there. The eyes. And I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all my method if you haven't watched my other videos. Make the peace sign. You're going to put your fingers in his eyes. You're going to poke your fingers in his eyes. Take you a pencil or a marker and draw you a line around your finger. Turn your peace sign, and that is where his nose is going to be. From his nose to below, and that is the middle of his mouth. This right here is exactly where his mouth will Take be. Take my finger, wrap it around it, and I just kind of model to see how far down I might want that scarf to hang. And just to give you an idea of how I'll probably be doing his scarf. And just to make him look really whimsical looking and just look really cute. And uh, you can just keep tinkering with it until you get it just right. If you were curious as to how I make my burlap blooms or blossoms, I basically... Take a very, in, like a inch wide piece, and I make them, I just make odd looking V's. I don't even try to make this perfect. Um, remember, it's primitive, and primitive means that you just use what you got. Um, if you're really being old fashioned about it, like, <clears throat> excuse me, I was raised on a farm and you used up everything you had, and you just like made it with everything that you had and made it old-fashioned so you even if you have one that's odd like that but you have one that's a little bit better um that's what you do you just make you some little petals and this one of course has four petals and so if you needed to cover up one it didn't turn out so great or uh you know it ain't so perfect you can do one like that 
and put it on there to where it's just a little just a little brooch looking piece and just glue it down and that's it don't you don't have to be fancy um or per se or you can turn them just like that it's, it's whatever suits you to make it look cute also let me go over the buttons buttons from dollar tree of course you're it's going to be a rare if you find two alike three alike it very rare don't overthink it. Have fun with it. Just take them and put them on it. Look, I have a, a green one. These are like a like a two different blues. Uh, these this is a black one that's actually got a place missing out of it and the black here. Um, remember what I told you. Primitive is just that. It's using what you have and uh, making it look pretty. Uh, that's why the little baby dolls and stuff look if you're worried ugly. about your box sliding too far down in there or getting lost down in it and pulling on the wire just do like i did when i cut that piece out i also took the same piece and cut it and bent it and glued this side next to the cardboard really didn't hurt it at all it was set there very well and i moved it around and you know i've had i picked it uh, I'm not worried about it going inward because it's only got so much wire and it's glued pretty good. It's not. A lot better. That's more like what I am wanting. Tin Can Snowman. So all those cans you got from Christmas and along with those eyeballs from Halloween, a little bit of the wire jute twine, and some leftover fur from one of the Dollar Tree pillows. Now this crop a dial is one of my favorite tools. It punches through metal, cardboard, wood, and you will find the affiliate link below. Now I took the fleece scarf from Dollar Tree and I put one around the top edge overlapping to the inside. Now this bottom one, once I put it on, when you get right here to the end, I want you to take your scissors, snip a hole right there, cut off the excess, and then cut in between the longest piece on the left side. Run one side into the hole, and you will then cut off the difference that you don't need. Now you're just going to basically tie a knot there. And make sure it is a knot and the rest of it's glued into place. And this will make a little scarf around the bottom edge. This is very primitive. So now we're going to take the eyeball and we're going to glue it in the center of that fur, fake fur. And then once you get that glued all about, trim it off with some scissors, glue it to the side. And now your tin snowman has some earmuffs. Take a bell and glue it to the side of that scarf. And then some little felt pieces I found. I made his eyes and his smile. And I grabbed me some orange and made his little nose. I'd already run the G twine, wire G twine through the top for his handle. And then I took the little stars off the snowflakes to make his cheeks. And then one of the felt snowflakes atop. I also took a piece of that orange left over just for some reinforcement. And now our tin snowman has a handle, and he is um, so as I adorable. Promised, the felt hat for the snowbird, and this is the video, the DIY for that apothecary jar, or from your mason jar, whichever one you may be using to make your snowbird. Your lid sheet of cardstock. You can also use a file folder, an old file folder. Um, will work just fine. You just need that stiffness. Fleece, scarf, felt. Use a letter size sheet of cardstock or a manila folder. Mark it half inch, four inch, and one inch. At this point, we have glued our cardboard down to our uh, fleece and we have prepared our paper. Felt um, is a little more firmer, so you can see you can do it in parts and pieces. If you're using a vanilla folder, um, you really, it's not going to matter which. At this point, I'm going to begin gluing. Uh, this tab, the short tab, is going to go to the underneath of this disc. If you've been gluing around 
the circumference, you're starting to see your hat come into form. You're going to just um, glue. Okay, if everyone's been following directions and uh, keeping up with how this goes, you can see that you're just going to run a little bead of glue right here on the strip and close it up. And this is what your little hat should be looking like. Okay, so at this point, I have put my outer strip around here. You know, with the, the scarves, hat. you know, not everything is just perfect. So don't worry about it. Like I said, we're probably going to trim off a lot of that paper uh, because I want mine to have that worn, tattered look. See where we've already cut uh, our circle out. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to take our scissors, put as your brim of your hat. Okay, I hope they got that the edge there you want to kind of ride it up there so maybe you start your glue underneath an oh, inch away from going to run it right up against the edge see how i've done that and when you put the glue on you're not worried about these tabs you're worried about the upper edge so this piece you are going to glue the edge and you're going to overlap it here uh, no big worries and do it a good turn and give it a good look and and see how you want it to you know just shape it up a little bit as we do our our magic tools our scissors our magic tools and uh so then take your uh just personal project i did that is my christmas snowbird so now we've built the first thing this felt hat here is here we are trying goldfish it out bowl. stay tuned as you know you can find this in the floral section of dollar tree and um, so you'll find it over there in the glassware where the kitchen projects are. It has a seal on it. I call this a two-for-one uh, curd. But in the top is a usable candy dish. And like I said, it has a seal on it. So the great thing is you can store your tacky jewelry. Tape off your snowbird and paint your goldfish bowl and go ahead and decorate the inside. Then take the silicone Loctite uh, waterproof of the and attach both and then your the, jars together. The nose you do that, for the you'll snowbird have your inside glow. is actually a pine tree. And I'll turn it sideways so you can see it. And I painted it orange uh, for the tree uh, that's in here. Now the tree, as you see, it has little red balls on it. Um, glitter balls that I got from Dollar Tree. Then, of course, the snowman you see in there that came off of the glitter sticker packs from Dollar Tree. Um, the reindeer, the trees uh, out of there, that was the blue glitter uh, snowflakes that came from Dollar Tree. You can see the reindeer in there. And then over here, you can see the Christmas tree. And then I just did the snowman as though he were already DIY, we are going to make us a standing tall snowman. So I'm going to remove his bow tie because I'm going to remove his nose. I want to save all these pieces. I'm going to remove the brim of his hat, which I'm probably going to use this side. And then these pieces. Now place a base white paint on the back or the front of the snowman. And then Mod Podge here. the so, paper hat into like place. Gonna, and the, then the flow check turn is what I the piece sign. From, and then I and just trace over the that top. down. And since I didn't okay, have and then to paint you can make his eyes to paper, express any way you want to. Back over like it, this one, for example, in, is like the top of a semicolon. Layer. So I think you just call it a colon or a comma <laughs> and basically the black of the eye is going towards the center so obviously if this is going towards the center this one needs to go that way to make him look like he's looking over there if you don't feel comfortable making this type of eyeball you can of course just make circles
any way you want to. Excited for the winter. Yay! And use the Sharpie paint marker if you want to. And put some dots there. And that will brighten up his eyes. Over on my brush. And I just really watered it down. And going in a circle. And make sure you close my foam core board. So I want to go all the way to that inner indention. And I'm just going to take my pencil and trace it out so I know where to cut. And you can use your razor knife or your X-Acto knife to make that. And don't forget, you'll probably have to paint these pieces as well. And just in case there is a difference on this side, I'm going to make the smart move and flip it over so that it all matches and I want to add that there on the sides and this will give it a little bit broader stroke and glue these into place and I'm just going to free handedly write so I'm planning on putting a scarf here but what I did is in the back I went ahead and I took a pencil and I marked it. And as you can see, don't be stingy with the glue. This is going to be a heavy sign and we want it to stick. Take for the difference. Lay one there. And remember what I told you. We can always use this sign for something else. Put you a streak of glue. Put that stick there to compensate. For the height difference so it won't be such a big difference and that way the sticks will reach without this rocking going on i'm going to put some glue right here i'm going to actually accentuate the believe as you can see it's just barely any, but then when you put it again, I have chosen to go with burlap. I really like the primitive, uh, whimsical look on my snowman. And I've added his berries and his, I call it the pinch and the tuck. And then I will put that. And I'm just going to glue that. So now I've gotten his scarf and everything. The Dollar Tree. They had these decks were just dandy right there. Just a crafty day. Kind of look at our reefs and find, you know, what looks the best when you put them together. Just kind of look at them and position them and just see where it looks good together. Then you'll take your floral wire or zip tie and you'll attach the two together. Um, I'm basically going to take and wind the wire around it. Probably use some ribbon, but you know, hold it up and look at it and make sure that it's not toppling over backwards and just adjust it wherever you need it to in order and just making decisions. And you can stage it and really look at it first before you start doing anything and they'll help you too putting it together you'll see better and clearly what it is you're wanting and it'll start taking form and you'll know which direction to go um, going upward this way and I've also decided to start coming down this way and that's what I mean whenever you're staging your greenery you you'll start taking form and you'll just know where it is you're wanting to go with it and how you're wanting to go with it and where to put it and uh, just take advantage of the florals flowing in the way that you want them to and the great thing about the ones with wire in them is you can kind of form them and push them around and get bend them in the direction you want this wire in it but it's very bendy and very flexible and you can kind of get it to just go wherever you want to and I've been putting glue on the stem of it on the back side of it 
and just placing it where I want. And I really love how this is coming together right here. Because you do want them to chime. Just don't want them to drive you bonkers. Let's see? Big difference. Big difference. That's just a, a little trick from the crafters. This one has snowflakes and it's the white. And this are twice, depending on the ribbon. And with this one being a little bit wider ribbon, I'm having to fold it couple of times and then just pull it through and tie them on and there so it's going to cover up these ends so I'm not really a spot of hot glue underneath there so that they will stay you where can you see, want I've them. been strategically gluing my lights down and placing them exactly where I want them after I staged it and decided and then I went ahead and said okay I'll go ahead and put them in place that way I will be able to conceal my box behind the bow and everything will be exactly where I want it. And then if you do like I did, you'll turn them on. The button, I'll make sure that I've got it turned where I can reach the on and off switch real easy and keep it camouflaged at the same and time. And trying to make it stiff, I'm just going to use some already wired ribbon and glue it to it and then that way when I do my layers they'll already be together and it'll have the color and it will match uh, because that you can do a lot of people will not even fool with this uh, when I make something I have it for a long period of time so to me this is not a waste and so basically I'm just gonna put a spot of glue and just let it Whatever hits is fine. I don't want it really heavy. And uh, just drizzle it through there. It doesn't have to be a lot of glue. It's not necessary. I'm just attaching them together and using the one for its wire. And at the same time, still enjoying the color. It's silver and it's blue. With the blue one. And bring it in just a tad bit shorter. I usually take my finger or my index finger and place in there make it a tad bit shorter put it underneath you're going to bring it in a tad bit shorter just like this side and now you got it laid there underneath because you brought it back under now you're going to take it the tail of it and all and you're going to put your thumb right there to hold it in place. And you're going to roll it back over the top of your pile of bows. See, they're right there. And it's looking awkward, but it will come together. Hold it in place. Hold it in place. And bring that tail underneath. Scrunch them all up. I usually take my thumb and just push it up as best I can. And then you're going to bring that tail around again. Just like that. And then that is your difference. Now you, you've got two choices. You can cut that off right there and just glue that difference. And you have, you'll have you just adjust it. And if you need to, you can twist it around. But now it has that wire to help it. And so now you have your double stack bow. And you can just glue that. Back in the back. Now I'm just going to cut off the difference. That way it will stay in place for you. Both sides up and down. So I've got this Now piece. we do not need a whole felt hat to go atop of that reef. Simply because it's not going to accommodate it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually cut the back side of this ribbon spool off and I've got three inches here that's how tall I need my hat to be so I'm just cutting that away now I'm going to take and cut this in half so now I've got that half and I'm going to glue this to the outer part of that circle because that's all we're going to need. And it's going to be on of this board. And with it already curved, it'll make it easy to put this in place. Because it'll just roll up around it. 
And I'm just trying to eyeball the front or the very center of it and put some glue down the inside edge just to kind of build a pile there and hold it in place. It's set up and it's drying and we'll need this to lay flat so that's why we've cut the back off of it. So as you can see I'm just gluing it as I go it doesn't have to be a lot of glue, just enough to get it fixed on there. Here. Gobble glue along that edge. Bring your fleece up to it. And just give it a half of it. And I see where it's going to be. And I know that based on the one I did before, I'm going to be cutting this back side off because I won't need it. And I just go straight across. I don't overcomplicate just slightly. To make it easier, set it down. Figure where you're going to put how much brim you need. And then just kind of eyeball it. And then place your, so now that we've got the brim on there and glued into place, this extra that we had, we're going to bring it down. Now before we can finish, we have to put us some glue here. And then I roll it down gently. Just kind of bring it down. Pat it into place with your thumb. Smooth that edge. Kind of want to wrap this underneath just because it'll be sitting like this and we don't want that to be seen. So now that we've got this pushed down pretty close there, we can go ahead and cut some of that loose so that it won't pull and stretch to the side. Don't want to go too far. You want to just meet that edge because we'll glue that together here in a minute. We can cut just a little bit of the center of it out. Get it buckled down. It's kind of sticky because the glue is cool. Flapping. We have our half top hat. Ah, we have our little felt hat. So much glitter on that stuff. My gosh. That, I mean, that's security. I'm not glued them extra strips to the back of the hat, and now I'm gluing them to the camera if I can. It's hard to reach because the size of the reef. Maybe one right in there. There we go, guys it off it just looks fantastic like that. and i thought i'd come in here and hang it up and show you guys what it looked like and how good it turned out and let me cut off the lights and this is what it looks like with the lights out in the dark and it's absolutely beautiful it's right back here behind the greenery as we put it and it's wired in gorgeous and i was able to hang it right there in the middle and it worked out really The dust mop, solid white fuzzy one. Some of the painters take your needle nose ply. Now we have our section removed from out of our wreath form and just lay that aside. You're going to need your painters tape and what we're going to do is we're going to press these together and tape it down and it doesn't take a lot of effort to hold those but if you hold those in place and then wrap your tape around them, they will stay put.
now we have our crescent moon shape going now that way you got to clean even our wrap around our reef form so what you're going to do is take your plastic bag you've got it by the handles here you're going to take this bag and you're going to lay it across its midsection take the handles grab the tail of that same one and you're basically just hooking these plastic bags together okay so you got your handles we're basically going to take and wrap our form with the plastic bags and I'm just going to start down here and start wrapping the form now this will get noisy so I'm not going to be able to do this on camera or it will drive you nuts but you get the idea and just wrap your form That we've got our snowman glued down it's time to make his top hat so what I'm doing is I am repurposing a two and a half inch ribbon spool and I'm taking some of the tops and bottoms off of the spool in order to make the hat larger and I need a thicker brim so I'll glue these three together and then what I will do is I will actually offset that ribbon spool so that when I cut it using back, a quarter of a styrofoam ball the frame and gluing it to the side there so that it's suspended it but attached to the reef create the round form that we need in order to make this appear just like a snowman one, and I do need this large of a cardboard disc you could actually manufacture or you could actually use a cardboard uh, from a paper towel or TP and create your own but the ribbon spool is really handy because well it's already made and I'll use a razor knife to cut that and slide it over the reef form and then of course glue it closed again okay guys this is what it boiled down to I took the ribbon spool and I had to cut off the back side but you want to do that a piece at a time so that you create clamp area to where you can slide it on there so at this point we need to basically cover our hat with our fabric or like I'm going to use felt if it will work out correctly so see where that is cut it is clamping on there and that will basically hold in place even though it will be glued it will basically stay in place there now we've gotten our crescent moon snowman and I've went ahead and covered his hat with the felt and I went and got my flannel a star I do have snowflakes now these came out of Dollar Tree item now what I'm doing is holding it back here and I'm gonna put my bead of glue there and bring that fabric across I've already kind of uh, sized it up somewhat by just moving it and adjusting it it really doesn't have to be right here but i am bumping it there because it's going to be easier to go ahead and cover it than to do with less and guesstimate especially with that hat going to be in that area so it's gonna be easier just to go ahead and glue it through that area because the hat will sit here atop his head then that way I can go ahead and glue this down in the rear I'm not going to glue this down just yet because I want to hang the star from here so I need it to go in here just to let you guys know you might not want to get in a hurry with that part just yet Okay guys, I've got my skinny ribbon and I found me some bells and I am actually going to use a shortcut method for these bells. I'm literally going to put a dab of glue on that ribbon and just close it up so that it stays attached and they'll just make it 
more simplicity be to get my bells on there. And then I have three different sizes here. I have a gold one. I have a red one, but then I've got the little bitty green one. Then, of course, we're going to have our star. So basically, I am kind of determining, I guess, the, the bigger bell. Definitely want the star kind of a staggered way. I have not gotten his body parts yet, but I did steal these buttons off of a snowman from Dollar Tree. And I had the G-Twine there just as a kind of a makeshift for the mouth, try to figure out where the eyes go. And I have some orange felt that I'm going to make his nose out of. Now, to make his nose, I've just kind of made me a triangle, or, or rather a cone, because I need to create it first. So I need to glue that down in order to form his nose. So just glue the felt together and get ready to find some scrap fabric to stuff it with. The more crooked, the more authentic it will be, guys. So once I sized it up and trimmed it to the length that I wanted it, I stuffed it with some of the scrap fabric pieces and then I glued it into place. Now, as you can see here, I always model my stuff before I do anything, but I found that I needed to trim back some of the fur before I glued on his buttons and his eye. Then it was time to dress up that hat, add him a little bit of a smile, and I just used my black satin ribbon to do that. And you can trim out your hat any way you want. Now, to make his scarf, I doubled up a piece of two and a half inch buffalo check ribbon and I glued it around to the back. Then I took the front and roughed that up. I just clipped it and then roughed it up and pleated it and put it into place and added that snowflake. Now, once you've gotten your star and your bell strung together or whichever ornament you decide that you want to dangle from your moon, you're gonna to have to pull back your fabric right, right there. That's why you don't wanna glue it there and once you figure out how far down you want those to hang, go ahead and glue them into place, and then you'll glue your fabric around it, and you'll be done. So unless you just feel like you need to, um, I'm not going to put a backing or anything on the back because it sits pretty flat. On it. I took a safety pin, a little black safety pin, and I took the leftover of that ribbon and pinned me a little hanger to the back. That worked out pretty good, especially in that fabric. It looks much better hanging up than lying there. Voila! Here he is in his magnificent beauty with his buffalo check scarf, his crooked little carrot nose his stars and bells and he just looks absolutely gorgeous you guys kept asking for him and here he is and i was over complicating it so i had to go backwards in order to go forwards and he's just adorable with his snowflake adorning his scarf now, if you guys really enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up let's me and youtube know that you liked it and would like to see more of the like if you're new to my channel Read comments and suggestion boxes. Everyone who subscribes to my channel is part of my DIY team, and I listen to your requests. I read your comments, and I love chatting with you. Merry Christmas, everyone. Until the next DIY, I'll be crafting, y'all. Okay, guys, the first thing I'm doing is I'm just putting some burlap around my candy cane reef form to camouflage and to create an outdoors appearance glue that directly onto this metal and just kind of wrap it around the back side. It will also help to anchor our snowman into place. We have our candy cane covered. I've covered mine completely with burlap and just left it normal in the back. Next thing we're going to do guys is get out our tree. You will not need these holders and we're going to take this piece off. And it literally just what you comes want to do off. is spread out your limbs. And another thing is right here in the center, you're going to bend that. And it will almost sound like it breaks when you bend it. So what we're going to do is spread our limbs out 
coming outward to fill in that space versus it being spread out like regularly when we're doing our tree. You've finessed your tree and fluffed it up and gotten everything situated and the top bent down, you're going to have the long limb. That's where our star is going to be. And your tree should be fitting perfect in that round and looking like it's being bent over so that our snowman will be reaching for the stars. Now this is what's concerning me is this canal. And in videos past, I've shown y'all to take your needle nose pliers and you're going to flatten this. And I mean literally just press it down and go all the way to the end. Please be careful when you do this because that metal is sharp and this will lay flat. Now we can tie our tree down. But before we do this and then place them on there and just kind of tie it in and just, you know, kind of make it look like a branch. And I'm just going to strategically place it in between because I do not want to shift my branches from where they are if I can help it. And since I've got this in place to show you guys, I'm going to try to do this without moving my tree. So that worked out pretty good. And then this second one will be hidden up here because it's going to be fitting going around that round. And I just want to make sure that I get it across the pipe that creates this tree. And I'm literally just going across it and bending it underneath. Now, that's taking care of that situation. Now, the star I got from Dollar Tree as well. And I will be cutting the spring off of the bottom of it. So that's going to go there. have two brown pipe cleaners that I am going to make his arms out of. So one of these will be folded in half just like that. Oh, three or four inches long. So we need two pieces that long. So we got these will be his arms. Take the one piece and basically just like from school and you can just twist that little pipe cleaner around there. And that's going to make his hand. Okay, I cut that back part off of the hat. And that will go there on top of Frosty's head. In place, now we can glue our star into place. Okay, I grabbed my pom-poms, and you can get these at Dollar Tree as well. These are the smaller ones. They're not tiny, but they're smaller. So I'm going to give him some buttons and for his eyes. And then I've got an orange Chanel stem left over from Halloween. So I'm actually going to bend that there and make it into his carrot nose because it'll be pointy everything into place with the exception of his outer arm I began making his scarf and I made a little wide and then folded it and I cut little slits at the bottom half and roughed it up and then I made the other one a little bit shorter so it looks like the wind's catching it okay now using those little pieces left over from the other DIY we can now put this little snowflake charm on here for Frosty's scarf clip. Now to make his smile I have this little bit of satin ribbon left over from the last project. It's a little bit too wide and I really need the more narrow ribbon but I only need a small piece of this to make his smile. It's going to take a little bit of patience and finesse to get that little bit of a smile on there, but it looks so much better than trying to put dots or anything else. Go ahead and attach his arm and then bend it so you can make it look like, well, Frosty's got a joint in his elbow. Okay, guys, we got Frosty Chin for the star. Here comes Frosty. 
reaching for the stars, and so handsome in his buffalo check top hat. I did go back and I took the flocking spray and sprayed the tree. Make sure you go outside to spray the flock onto your Christmas tree to give it that snow and give it a more realistic feel as well. He's reaching tall and high. Keep reaching for the stars. Don't give up on your hopes and dreams. We are going to make us a wine cork. Our snowman. first set is going to be six corks wide. Our next two sets will be five corks wide. And then the next two sets will be four corks wide. So that's what we'll need to make his body. And basically, you'll just want to begin gluing them side by side. And it really only takes a small amount of glue and just keeping them lined up is the main thing and just keep going until you get them all glued in a row. Now at this point you should have two rows of four, two rows of five, and one row of six. This is for his body so we can set those aside. Now we need to work on his head. We will need one row of four two rows of three and one row of two and the best way to assemble these is I have my row of four once I've glued this on one side and I place that glue there I'm going to buckle it to the adjoining one to get this one to this one glue it to the singular first and when you place your glue there that way you can get a better attachment to the next cork and you can turn the cork as you need it. Now once you've got those glued together and gotten them straight, what I do is I put security glue or what I call glue insurance and that's I go through there and I put a spot of glue. Once that dries, I will roll it over and do the very same thing on this side and that will just help give them a better adhesion so that we make sure that they are firmly glued into place. Now for his head you should have one row of four, two rows of three, and one row of two. Now it's time to assemble our snowman. So we're now we're going to put together our wine cork snowman. The sixth row is our main body that's in the center of our snowman. So we need a row of four, a row of five, a row of six, a row of five, and then a row of four. And you'll glue those together and that's going to form his body. Now when you begin assembling your snowman, because the touch is going to be here, in that area, I would recommend the way that I do it is I place glue on each side of the cork and then if I need to I can go back and put glue insurance. So I'm just doing it on the areas where I know that that cork will most likely sit. And you can tell right away. If you're using Surebonder glue, this is going to be a quick adhesion. You're not going to have any trouble. Now once you get that assembled, I would recommend that let that cool a little bit. Go back and just go in there and put a small shot in between each of the corks because the very detailed point on the Sure Bonder mini glue gun will allow you to do that and it's just like a hummingbird beak. It can really get in those little small crevices. Now our next row for our snowman that we want to put on this is our number six row. That is our middle section and we're building our snowman. And you'll just continue assembling just as before. This is the 20 watt cordless mini glue gun that is on the charging cradle. It does have a silicone pad here to catch any drips and they immediately will be slid right off. 
as long as it's plugged into this cradle, it will keep its charge. The great thing about this little glue gun is you have your power adapter cord, which is six feet long, and as long as it's resting in this cradle, it's going to keep charging, and you see the red light on the NK it is on, but it has an on and off switch. So, just by that little flip, no light, you can actually keep this plugged in, and it's just fine, and turn it on when you're ready to use it. Allow approximately five minutes for your glue gun to heat up. It does have a silicone cover over the tip to prevent you from getting burnt, it also has side fins. This keeps the gun from getting a backup of glue. It has a silicone plunger as well as a silicone plastic pusher. This one uses the mini glue sticks. You will also find this in my Amazon store. So the link down below for the Amazon store, you can click on it. You'll be able to find the corks there if you need them. Definitely the Sure Bonder glue gun. And most of all, most importantly, the Surebonder glue sticks. They are manufactured in the USA. Surebonder is the largest glue stick manufacturer in the United States. And they have a superior resin that makes these glue sticks. There is none other that can compare that does as great a job. You have a quick cooling cycle. So as soon as you glue it, in, in no time at all, it adheres right then as far as tack, takes very few minutes to cool down, and voila, you are set on go. So now we've got our snowman's body done. To assemble his head, we're going to do that in the same order. We will need three, four, three, and then two. And I recommend putting that together, and once you do, you will of course, attach it to the body. Don't forget to put your glue insurance in between each of the joints, and I do it each row as I put them together. Now, in looking at my snowman, he just didn't look finished, and I realized I forgot to add three corks down here at the bottom. So, in looking back at the inspirational picture on Pinterest, you need three more for the base, making a total of 39 wine corks that you will need to make your snowman. We now have our snowman assembled. You can pick a favorite side and we're going to place that out of our way for the time being and bring our ribbon spool up here. I have some black felt that I'm going to use to make his hat. Now this particular top hat that I'm making, I know it seems odd at this moment, but you'll understand once we do this. You're actually going to take one side off. The other side you want to take it with a pair of scissors and go ahead and cut it against that cardboard round. And just take that whole area and even it up. And now we have basically this is going to be our hat. The easiest way on this disc is to go ahead and cut your felt or fabric the width of your disc and this piece you're going to glue straight down to the disc now you want to trim it off the outside perimeter and the best way to do that if you, so that you can tell what is what can actually take and rub it now a little trick that you can use is take your black magic marker and just run it right through that area and that will cover it up and color it in so that if the edge of your bull is showing, that will mask it and make it blend right in. Okay, now to finish our snowman, I've got some ribbon here. We've got his hat made, and we need to add him a scarf and a little brim around his hat. Okay, for our final step, I've added some berries and a little bit of greenery to my little top hat for my snowman. And we've already added his scarf out of the same 
his hat band and his scarf match. So now we can take his hat and glue it atop of there. Voila! We have our beautiful little wine cork snowman. Till the next DIY, I'll be crafting y'all. Bye guys.